Hello viewers, so welcome back to the course on matrix computation and its application. So in the previous lecture we have introduced the concept of inner product space. So in this lecture also we are going to discuss inner product in different different vector spaces. So let us uh, start with the inner product in the space of uh, vector space of polynomials. So suppose we have a vector space V. that is a set of all the polynomials of degree n. So, it is I can say that the set of all polynomials of degree less than equal to n. Now, I know that this is a vector space of dimension n plus 1. Now, from here, now I take a uh, two polynomials, suppose I take P and Q that belongs to the polynomial set of polynomials P. This one. So, suppose my uh, P is basically I can call it that A0, A1x a 2 x square and a n x n. So, this is one of the polynomial that belongs to set of polynomial p n. I take the another polynomial as b 0, b 1 x, b 2 x square and b n x n. So, that is also belongs to polynomial. Now, we want to find out the inner product of P Q, because I want to say that when I can talk about that P and Q are orthogonal to each other or I can normalize these uh, polynomials. So, for this one I need to define the inner product in the polynomials. So, the inner product we are defining here is that because you can see that if we take the polynomial here of nth degree then its coefficient a 0, a 1, a 2 up to a n that makes a vectors in R n plus 1. Similarly, I have a q that also the coefficient of this one makes the vector in R n plus 1. So, I can say from here that a 0, a 1, a 2, a n if I take as a vector, the so column vector. So, this will belongs to R n plus 1. So, now we can uh, uh, we can define the inner product here as summation. So, I can define it as a, a 0, b 0, a 1, b 1, a 2, b 2 up to a n, b n. So, this is same as we are defining here a i's into b i's i from 0 to n. So, this is generally what we are doing, we are taking a simple dot product of the coefficients of the given polynomial. So, this way we are defining this inner product in the space of matrices or space of a polynomial p n. Now, the thing is that now we are able to define this in a product. So, we need to check or verify all that whether it is satisfying all the four condition or not. So, if you see from here then this is just the dot product and this dot product we already know that is satisfying all the four properties of the inner product. So, this one uh, we you can verify yourself that this is a inner product define on the set of all polynomials. So, now from here I will define the norm on the P. So, this one will be equal to taking the inner product of P itself and then taking the square root. So, from here you can say that this is equal to A naught square plus A 1 square 
up to a n square under the root. So, this is I can define the length of the polynomial or the norm of the polynomial. So, from here if I take suppose I take a polynomial p and then suppose I take this as may be 1 minus x plus 2 x square plus 3 x cubes. Suppose I take this one, I take the another polynomial q. So, that I am taking as minus, so I just take minus minus 1 and then I just take plus 3 x. So, and then I take it here or maybe I just take it 1, then I take minus x square and then I take plus x cube. So, let us take these two matrices or to uh, these uh, cubic polynomials. Then I want to check about whether these polynomials are orthogonal to each other. So, I will just take the inner product of this. So, inner product if I am taking, so this is 1 taking the constant and then I will get plus minus 1 into 3 the coefficient of x, then I am taking coefficient of x square that is 2 into minus 1 and then 3 into 1. So, from here I will get 1 minus 3 minus 2 plus 3. So, this is basically I am getting minus 1, so that is not equal to 0, so not orthogonal. But now suppose I take the basis, standard basis. So, let us take I take the polynomial p as 1 and q as x square. Then I know that if I take the inner product of these two, then this will be 1 and then coefficient of this one 0 and coefficient of x square is 0 here. So, that will equal to 0. So, I can say that the 1 and x square are orthogonal with respect to inner product. So, whatever the inner product we have defined this one, they are orthogonal to each other. So, this is the corresponding inner product. It may happen that we may define the different type of inner product also. So, with this inner product I can say that these two polynomials are orthogonal to each other. Similarly, we can define now I take the vector space V as set of all the continuous function from A to B in the defined in the close interval A to B. So, this is a vector space we know that it is an infinitely dimensional vector space. Then I just take the uh, two elements for this one or two vector from this one. So, let us take f x and g x that belongs to the vector space V. Now, I want to define the inner product this one. So, for this one we take the inner product as from A to B taking the integration of f x g x d x. So, this actually this integration is coming from the, the dot product because dot product is defined on the discrete vector and when we take the function then this dot product change into the integral. So, this is the inner product we are defining on the space of all the continuous function defined 
over the interval a b. So, now you can verify from here that whether it is a uh, inner product or not. So, we can s verify all the four condition. Now, f the first one is that taking the inner product of f with itself. So, this one you can define as a to b. So, it will be f x into f x. So, it will be f x square d x and now from here it is a square of the function. So, it is a positive function taking the integral. So, it is all value is always greater than equal to 0 and if I say that this integral is 0 that implies that my function f x should be equal to 0 because it is a positive function and positive function and we know that it is the area under this function f x square. So, area is always uh, positive. So, it is always greater than equal to 0 and if this area is 0 then only I can say that the function itself is 0. So, it, it is satisfied. The second one is that if I take f and g then very easily we can say that this is equal to g f. So, it is uh, symmetric also. Third one is that if I take f plus h g three functions I am taking defining the inner product. So, I can write here f plus h x into g x d x. So, this will be equal to a b I can write it a f x plus h x and g x d x. So, this one I you can say that we can write this as a inner product of f with g plus inner product of h with g. So, this is true for all f h g belongs to the vector space what we have defined here. So, third property is also satisfied and the fourth property is then I can take any scalar. So, we are defining this one. So, I can take k of f and taking the inner product with g. So, very easily I can write this as k from a to b f x d x. So, I just write first I write like this one k f x g x d x and I can take the k common. So, then it become the inner product of this. So, this is true for all k belongs to the field. So, here field is a, a real number. So, all these pro properties are satisfied. So, based on this one we can say that this is a inner product. And I can say that from here that V the vector space with set of all continuous function is an inner product space. Now, based on this one suppose I take uh, the vector space for example, I take a vector space of set of all continuous function defined from maybe 0 to 1 and suppose I take a function f x is equal to x. I take g x is equal to maybe x square I just take. Then I define the inner product of f g so, this will be taking the integration from 0 to 1 and this is f x g x d x. So, this will be from 0 to 1. So, it is x into x square d x and then from 0 to 1 it is x cube d x. So, it will be x 4 over 4 from 0 to 1. So, it will be 1 by 4. So, it means their inner product is 1 by 4 in this case. Now, 
suppose I want to find its magnitude or its norm. So, this one I can define as norm and I take the under root. So, this will be equal to taking the under root and from 0 to 1 f x square d x. So, this one from 0 to 1 f is my x. So, it will be x square d x. So, it x square d x will be x cube by 3. So, it will be 1 by 3 under the root. So, 1 over under root 3. So, this is the, the norm of this vector. So, from here I can write the unit vector or normalized vector. normalized vector we can write as f here divided by its magnitude. So, from here I can write this is equal to x over 1 by under root 3. So, it is under root 3 x. So, it is a normalized vector I can represent this one by hat that means its magnitude is 1. So, now from here you can take this one and you can verify that if I take its norm then it will be 1. So, we have to keep in mind that we it is always taking the square root of this. So, this way we are able to find the normalized vector. Now, suppose I take uh, suppose we define another vector space v taking from minus 1 to 1. Now, in this case I am taking the set of all the continuous function defined from minus 1 to 1. So, in, in this case let us I take my function one function f x I just take x and suppose I take g x is equal to x square and now I define the inner product between these two. So, I define the inner product and just to check that whether these two vectors are orthogonal to each other or not. So, I will define the inner product f and g. So, in this case the integration will be from minus 1 to 1 and f is x and g is x square d x. So, it is from minus 1 to 1 x cube d x and you can say from that this is the odd function. So, if I take its integration from minus 1 to 1, so it is going to be 0. Then I can say that the function f x is equal to x and f a, uh, g x x square are orthogonal. So, you can see from here that the same set of vectors we have taken x and x square on this interval. In that case, if I take the inner product that was not equal to 0 it was 1 by 4. So, this vectors or this function was not orthogonal with respect to this inner trans, uh, inner product that is from 0 to 1. But if I change the interval then the same vectors becomes orthogonal to each other. So, everything depends upon that how we define the inner product. So, from here you can say that these two vectors are orthogonal to each other under the inner product from integration taking from minus 1 to 1. So, this is the way we can define. Now, so after dealing all these things in the real vector space, let us see what is going to happen when we deal with complex vector spaces. So, 
in this uh, lecture I am going to give you some quick review that how the complex vector spaces are defined. As we already seen that in the complex vector spaces like suppose I take the vector space V and we call it C n. So, in this case I am taking the field F. Now, I start with the very uh, first vector space I am taking. So, let us say I take uh, suppose we take the vector space V over C that is just the complex line defined on the field R because R is also a field. So, I am defining at this one. So, if you see from here then the vectors are coming from the complex line or complex plane and this R the, uh, the scalars are coming from R the real number. Now, let us see what is going to happen in this case. So, if I, I know that we know that that the vector space V is a vector space because it satisfies all the condition and we know that if I take 5 into some uh, vector maybe I just take 1 i then it will be equal to 5 and to 5 i and that belongs to the complex plane C. Okay, so, and addition is also well defined. So, everything we, we can check that this is a vector space. Here I am taking the field as a real number. Now, I want to define. So, we want to define its basis. Now, basis means I want to find a complex number such that we using that complex number I should be able to create all the complex numbers. Now, you can see that for example, I take a complex number 1 plus i. So, this 1 plus i I can generate as now the scalars are coming for the real number. So, I have to take a k. So, k is coming from real number. So, what should I take the k multiply by vector so that I get 1 plus i. So, from here I know that I can write this as a 1 into 1 plus i itself only. It means that 1 plus i is created by only 1 plus i or any complex number a plus i b I can generate only with the help of 1 into a plus i b. It means if I choose any vector from the vector uh, from the complex plane that can be written in this form because the scalars are coming from the real line. So, I cannot take the those as a complex it is coming only from the real line k is belongs to r. So, this is possible only this way or maybe I can write this as if somebody says then maybe I can write this as 2 into a plus i b divided by 2. So, in that case also I can write, but the ultimately our concentration is that this can be generated by this way or I can write any k here a plus i b by k. So, now from here we found that if I take any complex number that can be created in this ways. So, from here I cannot say that there is so it which implies that there does not exist a unique complex number unique vector V that is a complex number which can spend
span so which can span the whole complex plane so from here we can say that the vector space v with the set of complex numbers defined on the field of real number is infinitely dimension is infinite infinite dimensional vector space and complex plane we you know that that a plus i b can be written as so i take the a on this direction b on this direction so suppose this is my a plus i b and we also represent by a b this one so it is my a and this is my b and this is a square b square under the root now Now suppose I take the vector space V with the same complex, now I am taking the field as a complex. So in this case for any, uh, for any vector V that is A plus I B that it belongs to the vector space V here, we can write A plus I B as taking a plus i b and the vector I can take 1 here or I can write as a plus i b by 2 into 2. So, this way also I can write it means that if I so this is the same way. So, I just remove this one and I take this here. So, I choose any vector suppose you take minus i. So, I can write this as a minus i into 1 you just take under root 5 plus 3 i. So, this one I can take as root 5 plus 3 i into 1. So, I from here I can say that this whole vector space v is spanned by 1 because all the elements are spanned by 1 by taking all this one. So, here it is the scalar k that is coming from the set of complex numbers and from here we can say that the vector space v is one dimensional or I can say v spanned by 2 by this way divided by 2 into 2, but it will have a basis which contain only one element. So, from here I can say that V is one dimensional vector space. So, everything here we can say that the lot of things changes when we change the field. So, this is where we can define the complex numbers. For example, I just uh, take vector space of a real number. I just if I take vector space of real numbers and I am taking a field as set of rational numbers where q is set of rational numbers. So, in this case also suppose I want to uh, find out uh, uh, may be 5. So, 5 belongs to the vector space v. So, I can write 5 as 5 into 1. So, this 5 is coming from that is k coming from the set of rational numbers. So, it is rational number and 1. So, no problem, but suppose I want to write a vector I take may be root 2. So, root 2 belongs to the real number. So, I can write root 2 as 1 into root 2 because I cannot take here root 2 into 1 because root 2 is not the set of rational numbers. 
does not belong to the rational numbers. Okay. So, in this case I can write root 2 like this one. So, it means that I am taking a vector that belongs to real line and this I am taking a k belongs to rationals. I just want to tell that the root 2 is a irrational number. So, it means that all the ish irrational numbers we have to define in this way. So, this way also I can say that if I take the set of real numbers on the set of rationals the field. So, it is infinite dimensional vector space and what are the uh, basis. So, I can say that in this case the basis is I can take all the set of all irrational number and then I just take union 1 maybe I can take 1 because all irrational numbers are generated in this way and if the rational number is there we can generate by this way. So, this contain the infinite number of elements and so it is a infinitely dimensional vector space. But if I take r over r then we know that this is one dimensional. vector space. So, till now we have taken such type of things that we are taking the vector space r over r or r n over r and in that case we know that this is well defined, but if we change the field then these things may happen. Now, we talk about the, the complex uh, vector space just we because we want to define the inner product in that one. So, let us uh, uh, define this one. So, let us I take the C n. So, I am taking the C n over C. It means that the field I am taking complex number and this is. So, if I take any vector. So, let us take u belongs to C n. It means u is equal to u 1 u 2 u n and my each u i belongs to the complex number. So, I can write from here that my u can be will be of this type I can write like this one maybe it will be a 0 plus i I can write this as a 0 plus i b 0, a 1 plus i b 1, a 2 plus i b 2 and so a I am talking from here. So, I just start from here itself from the 1. So, it is a n plus i b n. So, this is my u basically. So, u is always of this form because all the components are also complex. So, this will be of this form. So, this is my one of the vector in u. Similarly, I can define the another vector v. So, if you uh, take from here then I can define my u as now I, I can write my u as a 1 a 2 a n plus i times I can write b 1 b 2 b n. So, any vector u can be written as. So, this is if you see that is a real component of the vector u. So, I can write from here that this is equal to a real part of u plus i time and this is my imaginary part of u. So, I can define any vector from C n in this way. Now, Now, we, uh, we can define its basis. So, I know that 
if I want to define the basis of this one. So, its basis will be again. So, I just talk about the standard basis. So, it is n dimensional. So, n dimensional means the basis will be standard will be E 1, E 2, E n, where E 1 is 1, 0, 0, 0. So, like this one. So, E n is 0, 0, 0, 1, because I am taking the field as a complex number. So, if you take any complex number, I know that I can write u as a 1 plus i b 1, a 2 plus i b 2, a n plus i b n. I can write this as a 1 plus i b 1, this is scalar I am taking multiplied by e 1 plus a 2 i b 2 taking the scalar multiply by this one and a n plus i b n multiply with the vector e n. So, these are all our scalars coming from the set of complex number. So, this is we know that the c n over the c is n dimensional vector space. So, it is a n dimensional vector space. Now, from here we can, now suppose I just want to see that how we can define the linear combination in the terms of a vector spaces. So, let us take one example, let us suppose we take C 2 and taking over C. So, C is a set of complex number. Some books also write like this one. So, this is also sometime it is written like C this one over C. So, that is also notation, but this is basically set of complex number. Let I take the vector some vector I take. So, let us take z 1 a vector I am taking from here and this is suppose 1 and 1 plus i z 2 I take 1 minus i and this is my i. So, this is belongs to C 2. Now, I want to uh, take. So, suppose I uh, choose now for any vector z belongs to C 2. Suppose I take z is equal to maybe I just take it i 1. Now, I want to find what will be the coordinates of i 1 with respect to the this z 1 z 2. It means I want to find that what are the coordinates of this vector with respect to these two vectors z 1 and z 2. So, what I am going to do is that I am going to define a linear combination. So, in this case I am defining now the scalars will be if you see from here the scalar is also complex number. So, from here you just see that I can write here it is a 1 plus i b 1 this is the first scalar or maybe I just write it as a 1 plus i a 2 taking the first vector 1 plus i then b 1 plus i b 2 and this is I am taking 1 minus i i. So, I have defined the linear combination putting this vector equal to 0. 
So, you have to keep in mind here that that the scalars here this is my scalar this is my scalar that will be belongs to the C this also belongs to C. So, we have to take it as a complex number. Now, from here I can define this as so this one I can write component wise. So, from here I can write this is I 1 A 1 plus I A 2. So, this should be equal to A 1 plus I A 2 plus this one into 1 minus I. So, this is the first one B 1 plus I B 2 multiplied by 1 minus I. Next one is a 1 plus i a 2 multiply by 1 plus i plus I am taking this one into i. So, it will be i b 1 plus i b 2. Now, from here I take the component wise we can compare this one. So, from here I can say that this will be so, now I can multiply here and collecting the terms. So, I maybe I can just simplify. So, it will be A 1 plus I can write from here A 1 plus I A 2 and then I multiply here. So, it will become B 1 and then plus b 2 because uh, i b 2 is minus i say to minus i square b 2 and i square is minus 1. So, this one plus i. So, I multiply by this. So, it will be b 2 here minus b 1 this one and similarly I can take from here. So, it will be a 1 minus a 2 plus i I can define here a 1 plus a 2 plus i b 1 plus i b 2. And from here if I compare these things so, I can write I 1. Now, I take the real part and imaginary part separately. So, it will be A 1 plus B 1 plus B 2 this I have defined plus I I just take it is A 2 plus B 2 minus B 1. Similarly, I can define from here the real and imaginary part. So, it will be a 1 minus a 2 and I am taking multiply by i here. So, it will be minus b 2 plus i. So, it is a 1 plus a 2 plus b 1. So, I get this value from here. Now, we need to find out the 4 coefficient a 1 a 2 b 1 b 2. So, we need the 4 equation. So, from here I get a 1 plus b 1 plus b 2 that become 0. Comparing this one I will get a 2 plus b 2 minus b 1 is 1. a 1 minus a 2 minus b 2 is 1 and a 1 plus a 2 plus b 1 is 0. So, this is the 4 equation and we need to solve this one to find here. So, if we solve this equation, so we get the value as I got a 1 is 1, a 2 is 0, b 1 I got minus 1 and b 2 is 0. <coughs> so, this is I got. So, from here I can say that i 1 is equal to 1 
into the first vector. So, it is 1 over 1 plus i minus 1 minus i i. So, if you see from here it is 1 minus 1 cancel out and plus i it will come and 1 plus i minus i this. So, here we can write the linear combination. So, this is just the simple one you have discussed. So, this way we have to find out the linear combination of the given vector. Now, so if we are able to define the vectors in the complex plane, similarly I can define if I take C 3 over C, then maybe I can define a vector u as 1 maybe 1 plus 2 i minus 2 i like this one. So, this belongs to C 3. So, same way we have to deal. Now, once we define the vectors, I want to define the matrices. So, this matrices we want to define of suppose of order r cross r over complex. It means that the elements of the matrix can be complex numbers. For example, so set of all matrices of order R cross R having complex elements. Complex elements means complex numbers. For example, I take uh, maybe I will define 2 by 2 matrix over the complex number. So, suppose I take my matrix A as 1 plus i maybe 1, 2 i minus i, one matrix I am defining, another matrix I am defining 1, 0, 0, 1. So, that is also complex number. So, because I know that the real number, each real number can be written as in the form of complex number. So, this is also belongs to this one. Now, suppose I take this matrix. So, I know that this is a dimension 4. So, in this case I know that m 2 cross 2 over the complex number is 4 dimension and its standard basis and having standard basis as E 1 is basically 1 0 0 0, E 2 is 0 1 0 0, E 3 0 0 1 0 and E 4 is. So, this is my standard basis and this is 4 dimension. Now, in this case our now for the complex number I know that we can define the conjugate. So, conjugate of A will be this one 1 minus i 1 i minus 2 i. So, this is a conjugate. So, I have to take the conjugate of each of the element in the matrix given matrix. Now, for the uh, complex matrices we define the terms A conjugate transpose, we generally write this as A star. So, in this case what we take, we take the conjugate first and then taking the transpose. So, I can write from here that this is equal to 1 minus i 1, it is i and it is minus 2 i. I have taken the conjugate and then I have taken the transpose. So, this is, this is called the conjugate transpose. transpose and that is represented by star. Now, for maybe I can, 
فور فور كومبلكس ماتريسز اور ماتريسز هاوينغ دا كومبلكس نمبرز If I take a star is equal to a, it means I'm defining a conjugate transpose that is equal to a. <coughs> so this is called a is an or a is a Hermitian matrix. When I say a star is equal to minus a, then it is called a is called skew Hermitian. So it is a analogous to the symmetric matrix in real number, and this is analogous to the skew symmetric matrix in the real number. So one thing extra we need to do whenever we are dealing with the set of complex numbers. Then also if I take any lambda as scalar, so in this case scalar is coming from the complex number, then if I take lambda A any matrix taking the conjugate then it is equal to lambda conjugate a conjugate. Some observations you can write. Also, if I take the matrix A and taking two time conjugate, then it is equal to A. So, you can write down some properties. Then, if I write A conjugate transpose, that is equal to if I take the transpose and then conjugate no problem and the fourth one is if I take a b conjugate then it is equal to a conjugate into b conjugate. So, this way we can define the terms in the set of matrices in the complex form. So, once we are able to do this one then I want to define the inner product in the complex vector space. So, that we are going to discuss in the next lecture. So, we will stop here. So, in the today's lecture, we have discussed about the inner product in the space of continuous function defined over a interval a b and then we want to define the inner product in the case of uh, complex vector spaces. So, we have discussed uh, some properties or how we can deal with the complex uh, vector spaces having the vectors or having the matrices. So, now in the next lecture we will discuss that how we can define the inner product in the complex vector spaces. So, uh, thanks for watching this one, thanks very much. Mm -hmm.